Coming up next on Virginia Outdoor Life, cast off surf fishing in the Outer Banks. We'll prove that monster bucks are indeed right here in southeastern Virginia, and we'll help you find the perfect holiday gift for that outdoor person on your list. It's all coming up next on Virginia Outdoor Life. Welcome once again to Virginia Outdoor Life. So glad you could join us on this Saturday, December 16th. Jim Hale with you alongside once again the captain, Eric Burnley. Always happy to be here. He really is a captain. That's right. Way. That's right. The Coast Guard says so, so it must be true. You darn tootin'. <laughs> Uh, Captain, you know, things got a little nippy on us here. Pretty darn nippy. Pretty darn nippy. Yes, it was right, right brisk out there. So, of course, the logical thing to do when that happens is just like the ducks and the geese and the head south. Head right? south. Try to find a little warm air down there. Yeah, get, get down around the Nags Head area. And uh, uh, that's where we hit the beach and uh, near Oregon Inlet. And that's where this fishtail takes place. try and do some surf fishing down here at Nags Head, Oregon Inlet area. I wanted to show you some of the rigs that we use in surf fishing and uh, how we rig them up. This is a spinning outfit, about a nine or 10 foot rod with a die, I mean a pen reel, and uh, it's spooled with 17 pound test line. It's a two piece rod, graphite composite. It's very light, very sensitive, and it'll cast very well. What we have on here is a very typical rig for surf fishing. This is a two hook bottom rig. We're going to bait it up with mullet. We're going to show you how we do that in a minute, but it's just a very basic, you can buy it any tackle shop uh, in Nags Head or in Virginia Beach or Norfolk or Hampton or anywhere you go. Just a very basic two hook bottom rig. And we have a four ounce uh, surf sinker on that one. This is a Penn 980 mag, which unfortunately they don't make anymore. If you can get a hold of one or you find a store that's still got some and you want to go surf fish and you can't beat this reel, this rod will throw four to eight ounces. We've got six ounces on there now and we may have to go to eight. And this is what is called a doodle bug. We get a lot of questions and when we do the surf fishing classes on what is a doodle bug. This is a doodle bug. It's just a little cork float that's been painted. Some of them are white, this one's yellow and red because it's kind of murky out there now. I wanted to go a little brighter colors with two, one or two hooks on them. Now what we're going to do is get the bait ready. We're going to get, the, we're going to use mullet because we're going to try and catch a rockfish and that's a pretty good rockfish bait. What we're going to do is fillet him just as if you had hoped to eat him. Always go through that bait twice and always leave the point of the hook exposed. Always leave the point of the hook exposed. Don't try to bury the hook. It just makes it harder to set the hook when you get a bite. There's no real big secret to surf casting. All you gotta do is just go real smooth. Everything you do should be nice and smooth, not jerky. Don't try to throw the, throw the thing out 90 miles. All you do is just lay it back there behind you and just come up nice and easy and it'll sail right out there, boom. Northeast wind will push them right in here if they're coming. There he is. Well, this is a nice fish. Woo, that's fun. That gets the old blood going, buddy, I'll tell you. <laughs> Not a bad fish. Said this northeast wind might bring one in. What a great story. <laughs> Great fun, great fun, I tell you. Yeah. And that, that fish, I don't know what they paid him, but uh, he couldn't have come <laughs> along at a better time. No kidding. <laughs> I mean, how, right then when we needed him. <laughs> you see so many people surf fishing. How successful is that as a form of, it's, like, for it, the stripers? You're right. not going to feed the family off of surf fishing, uh, but uh, you, you, if you stay at it and, and enjoy it and, and put some time in, you'll catch your share of fish. That's a rush, isn't it? Yeah, oh, it's it's <laughs> such fun. It's, it's yeah, I, it's... As much fun as you can have fishing, I think, is getting out there in the surf. 
and doing it on your own. And it's kind of one man against the elements. If you're out in a boat, you've got all the um, you've got all the electronics to help you out. When you're out there surf fishing, you got nothing to help you out. Right. And you know, uh, I know a fellow that wrote a book. If yes. you want to know more about surf fishing, <laughs> if you want to know great more book. about surf fishing, that's right. Yeah, check this out. Uh, we I did write a book a couple years ago uh, on surf fishing called Surf Fishing the Atlantic Coast and. Uh, forward by George Riger, and uh, it's available in all the bookstores around here. If you'd like to stop and pick one up, I'm sure the folks at Stackpole would be happy. And I have uh, read much of the book. It, it's really good, I, oh, I have to you. tell you. Not, you. not just blowing smoke here. <laughs> yeah. That, of course, is our mascot, Bucky, and isn't he cute all I'm dressed up you, for the holidays? He's dressed up. He is regaled in his holiday finery. Yeah. Yes, he is. Bucky is pretty nice <clears throat> eight pointer there, but folks, we got a call late last week about one of Bucky's brothers, if you will. The caller told us about a monster 17 point buck found out in Southampton County. And after some investigating, we found out the story was indeed true, but it is not your ordinary deer story as we found out after driving to the Ivor Hunt Club. Last year, Southampton County led the way in the deer harvest, and many of them monsters, as we were about to find out. JM, tell me, uh, what do you think happened with these two monster deer here? Well, these deer, evidently, they, they came head on to each other, and the antlers locked. And if you turn and you'll see, he's got some odd points on the side here, and this, this right antler of the smaller deer locked between these two side points and this upright beam here. Mm -hmm. And that was, that that locked him in permanently. And what it did is, is this big, biggest deer here, he's, he was a lot bigger and stronger uh -huh. than the smaller deer and he threw the smaller deer over his back. No kidding. And when he threw him over his back, this broke this deer's neck. My it God. popped it and it, when the taxidermist skinned it, it was broke right there. As you can see the sharp bend right there from his neck with his right. weight down. Right. That's what broke his neck. And then they fell and they pulled the big deer's head around and that pinned him down there and the big deer couldn't get up. You know, they've been found locked together, but we've never found a deer with that much size to it that was locked together. Mm. While it's very rare to see the aftermath of a vicious buck confrontation like this, these fights do occur frequently during the rut. During the breeding season, they become more aggressive, um, and they form territories like a circular area, and they mark it with scrapes, uh, with their hooves on the ground, and then they take the antlers and they scrape trees. That's this buck's territory. Uh -huh. Then another buck is here. Sometimes. Another one may come into the area, and his territory might overlap the other two. Then when these two come into contact, you'll have a conflict there. And that happens and, during the rut? Yes, during the rut, in the cool time of the year, which would be September, October. It bucks just go uh, crazy, don't they? It's, I guess you can call it that. And sadly, those two never separated. Eric, uh, Lanny, the game warden there, wanted me to remind everybody there's been a lot of talk about uh, you know that monster buck taken, and there's some huge bucks that come out of Southampton County, but unless you are a member or guest of a hunt club or you're hunting on your own land, then you're probably hunting on posted land and you're probably breaking the law. So Lanny's going to get you if you've heard about those big bucks and you ain't where you're supposed to be. So be careful. That's right. That's right. You want to stay where you belong. It's also a good way to keep from getting shot is to stay where you belong. Because if, if you're hunting in a, a, a land where you think you're the only one there and noises, mistakes can happen. Amen. You don't think anybody else is on the property and boom, the next thing you know, they got an you accident. Got Hey, time to take a look at some more trophies here. Those pictures are just keep rolling in. They're <laughs> awesome. We've got some great ones to show you tonight as we open up the old outdoor scrapbook. First up in the scrapbook is Ed Brookes from Newport News with his 10 point buck that has a 19 inch spread. Way to go, Ed. He bagged it at the Chickahominy State Game Lands in Charles City. Next is 13-year-old Danny Davis of Portsmouth. Danny caught this 12-pound bluefish over the Triangle Wreck. 16-year-old Jason Edwards of Smithfield has a pair of gems. This buck was bagged last season in Surrey County. The turkey is a 20-pounder with a 12-inch beard. Jason took the spring gobbler in Isle of Wight County. 
Five-year-old Zach Boyd shows off a 10-pound channel catfish. He had a little help from his dad when he pulled it out of the Chowan River last May. Steve Harding of Norfolk has two pictures. The first, a seven-pound, 14-ounce speckled trout caught last February in the southern branch of the Elizabeth River. The second picture, a stringer of speckled trout caught Thanksgiving Day. And finally, two from Art McCormick. The one on the left is a puppy drum caught at Cape Point, North Carolina, and on the right, an 806-pound blue marlin taken out of Oregon Inlet. Art was driving past the marina when he saw the fish being weighed, so he pulled over and took a picture for our scrapbook. Ah, yes, the season of giving, and that brings up a very important question, Captain. The question of what to give, and Captain Burnley, You've got some answers for us, don't yeah, you? Yeah, 55 foot Davis yacht would be nice. <laughs> right, Something yeah. small that fits under the tree, but tasteful. Tasteful. Certainly. Yes. Well, the captain went <laughs> out uh, with photographer Mike Bivo and hit some local stores to find out what is hot for that outdoor person on your list. Well, we're here at Wild River Outfitters with Lily Gilbert, and we're looking at uh, quite an awesome display of kayaks. And I understand they're quite popular now, especially this model here, where you can take two, uh, two grown-ups and even a, a small person could go along, a, a child. Is that correct? Absolutely right. It's our most popular and best-selling boat, and I think the reason is its versatility. The material is a heavy-duty polyethylene plastic. At, that is the same material they use in whitewater boats, although this gotcha. isn't considered right, to be a whitewater right, or item. A, or an ocean boat. Either, That's right? true. <laughs> it's perfectly suited for the inland waters around here. Very, very easy to learn to paddle it, too. So it's the most user-friendly thing we have. That's great. That's great. Well, thank you very much. You're more than welcome. Thanks for coming uh -huh. in, and happy paddling. Okay, we're here with Ben Rowell at Ocean's East Tackle Shop, Aragona Shopping Center, right off Virginia Beach Boulevard. And if you've been out shopping and looking all around for your sportsman, fisherman friend, or husband, or wife, or whatever, and you can't come up with a good gift, I think Ben's come up with one here. Ben, why don't you tell us what you got here? Well, this is an alarm clock that uh, I've found in one of my catalogs, and uh, everybody knows it's tough to get up fishing in the morning, and if you've got just a minute, I'll, I'll play this clock for you. Now, if that one won't get you up, then, then you were out too late That's the night right. before. That's right. You definitely been out too late. That is super. So. That is super. We are here at uh, Virginia Beach Sports with Tracy Carroll, and what we're doing is looking for last-minute Christmas gifts for the sportsman, and a gift that uh, you can give to somebody who is who enjoys the out of doors. It's called the Leatherman Tool. Well, I agree with you. It makes a it makes a great gift for your fisherman, your hunter, uh, just the guy around the house working in the garage or doing this or that. I'll tell you, that is a spectacular tool. And like I said, I've had one for several years and I've found a multitude of uses for it in hunting and fishing and, and, and everything. And fix stuff on the boat even in an emergency. So it's a real good present. Like I said, it goes with any, any type of outdoor activity. OK, as we continue our search for the perfect outdoorsman gift, we are here at the bait barn with Jerry Russell. And Jerry's going to show us a little bit about some black powder guns. Jerry, why don't you kind of show us what the, these two models that you have here. And this is the Wolverine. This is made by Knight Arms model mo muzzleloader. And this is uh, in the real tree camouflage pattern. For the guy who's out setting up the tree, it's an excellent choice. Now that Virginia has allowed us to use scopes, it lets you shoot earlier in the morning and later at night. For somebody who wants to break into muzzle loading, they could not beat a nice inline muzzle either. Yep. Uh, by Knight or Thompson Center. Okay, thanks a lot. Appreciate it. Glad you all stopped by. Thank you. Yes, now, honey, I just want you to know <laughs> I'll take the Knight muzzleloader, but I'd like to have a scope on it as well, and some battery-operated socks, and maybe one of those little <laughs> hand warmer deals, and one of those seat cushion things. Seat cushions, you know, oh, you they're take nice. Take it sit on your yes, stand, yes, you know, yes, and you sit down. So well, that's you need, you not need too a stand much. Too, don't you, to get yeah, up the tree? and I'd like you to buy me like a ten-point buck, maybe to come. <laughs> you know, can you pay him to come? By the seventeenth, uh, right? Yeah, like, pay, like my fish that came yeah. in, in the early segment. Yeah. How about it. that alarm clock, man? I love that thing. I love that thing. <laughs> that's great. Fish on, fish on. Well, I understand that later, perhaps, that one of our viewers. stop by. Yes, indeed. Drop one on them. Yes. That's right. 
It's hot product time once again, and this is a great Christmas gift, or what the heck, it's our Christmas <laughs> gift to you. Yeah, and, and Ben Rouse, This is too. sweet. We showed you this thing when Eric went fishing. Uh, let's, let's check this baby out again. There it is. Ready How to go. It? Press the button. It retails for $95, and check it out. If you didn't hear it before. <laughs> That's all right. awesome, man. All right, let me bring That's great. Here. Okay, here we go. Let's just kind of shake them up shake there. Up. All right, dude. There we go. Oh, that's lovely. That looks like uh, the guys I fish with there. Oh, wait. Uh, she wrote us a nice little note there in the oh, back yeah, here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is, dun da dum, uh, Mrs. Caroline, Caroline Penny of Portsmouth, Virginia. She says, We love the show and hope to see you in Portsmouth, and you are not going to have any trouble getting up. That's no. the place where you can uh, yeah, go ben find Rowell, this. Yeah, Ocean's East Tackle Shop was kind enough to donate this thing, at, uh, almost $100 worth of clock here. So, uh, we really thank, thank you all very much for sending in your cards and letters. You folks who have sent in your pictures and you haven't seen them yet, we're just uh, starting to get uh, backed up a little bit. But uh, just keep watching the show every week. Yep, every week. That's Don't the, miss the show. That way you can't possibly miss <laughs> seeing your picture. You got it. All right, Caroline, you got your alarm clock coming. Uh, now, Captain, uh, let's, let's talk a little bit about the fishing forecast. Okay. You mentioned the yellow fin and the blue fins earlier so, in the show. Well, yes, uh, that's going to be something that will be going on, whether it's going to be uh, over the Christmas uh, this you know, the week before Christmas or not, I don't know. But, yeah, that'll be something to be going on all winter. But the big thing is going to be the rockfish. The rockfish are just thicker than I've ever seen them before in my life out there. There are so many fish. We're catching them on stretch 25s, red and white. And it's, it's just spectacular. You Anywhere had quite you a day go. yesterday without yep. the camera, didn't you? Yes, I did. We had a great day. We've had a great week. It's just been great fishing. All it's right. Yeah, it's a great show, bud. All right, buddy. All right. Yes, indeed. <laughs> Folks, that's going to do it for another week of Virginia Outdoor Life. We appreciate you spending part of your evening with us. <laughs> we'll be back next week. Until then, we are going to see you in the great outdoors. Y'all take them easy.